Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono White Midrange. Welcome back to It Resolves, everybody. Here in the channel, we love to play new decks, have some fun, and hopefully learn a little something along the way. I can't guarantee that we'll always learn a little something, but we certainly will try. I do have to say, before we jump into today's deck, uh, we didn't get a video out yesterday. Unfortunately, I woke up Monday, like early, early Monday morning with a stomach bug and was basically up throughout the whole night, and it was not fun. And so yesterday, I just spent some time resting, relaxing, getting back to Enough so that way I can actually put out more videos today. Uh, so I do apologize for missing a day, but thankfully uh, it was just a 24 hour stomach bug and it's done now. So I'm back. You're stuck with me. Guys, today's deck is a fun one. Mono White Midrange. So the reason I wanted to pick this specific deck, which was taken from MTG Melee, I will link it down below the original creator and where it was played as well. Uh, it is a traditional standard deck also. But the reason I wanted to try this was because a lot of, when we think mono white, especially in today's standard environment, I don't necessarily, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't necessarily think like mid-range or a whole lot of control elements. Albeit, white obviously has a lot of control elements, in particular sweepers and things like that. And so, uh, when I was looking through deck lists this morning, I found this one and I was like, wow, this is a really fresh new take and it's just a little something different. And so, I hope that at the very least we can play it effectively. Whether we win or not is up to, we'll see how that goes. But I do think uh, this deck has a lot of legs to do quite well, even in best of one standard where I think it does have, you know, a bit of a disadvantage and we'll talk about that as we go through. But uh, to, to kind of sum up the deck very quickly, uh, it does have a handful of removals. So we do have lay down arms, we have destroy evil, we have fateful absence and we have depopulate. Those are kind of the obvious removal options, right? But on top of that, we also have Cathar Commando. This is going to be able to deal with artifacts and enchantments at instant speed, albeit it does it does cost a little bit of extra mana naturally. Uh, we do have the Wandering Emperor as well. This can obviously exile creatures at flash speed, which is great. Uh, and then I think, I think as far as the removal package, that's basically it. The big one here to talk about is Lay Down Arms. This is such an efficient spell, and we have seen this hitting a lot of decks in best of one, and so to see it here just makes a lot more sense. Uh, now, the second really kind of overly aggressive piece of this deck is the card draw. Uh, we've got a lot of card draw in what traditionally is a color that doesn't really do a lot of, you know, card draw stuff. So, we have Spirited Companion here as a two of. This is obviously going to come down and draw us a card. We've got Reckoner Bank Buster, which will allow us to draw some cards throughout the game. Um, we do have uh, the Restoration of Iganjo. This isn't necessarily card draw, I get it, but it does pull out a land from your deck and kind of deck thin you a little bit, which is good. Uh, wedding announcement, obviously, if you're attacking with two or more creatures, you will get to draw a card at the end of the turn. Uh, we have uh, Elspeth Resplendent. Again, not exactly card draw, but that minus three is going to be able to give us a permanent, which is helpful. And then Sanctuary Warden sitting at the top. This is not only our kind of end game mechanic, but it is also our way of drawing into more end game mechanics. So uh, this allows us the opportunity to remove counters, draw cards, create creatures, which is all really, really helpful. Uh, additionally, we have Roadside Reliquary. Uh, which very often will be able to draw two cards because we do have an abundance of both artifacts and enchantments in this list. Uh, now we do have 25 lands in the deck. Iganjo is our uh, removal land, of course. Uh, that's for good reason. We are trying to get up to six mana, but additionally, if we want to use the Aganjo or we want to pop off with the, the Roadside Reliquary, we want to be able to replace those lands down the road, and so this gives us the option to do so. Uh, as far as big spells that we have in the deck, um, the obviously Wandering Emperor is a solid one. Elspeth Resplendent is quite good as well, and then most importantly is that Sanctuary Warden. Just being able to attack in the air is sometimes enough uh, to just win the game especially in best of one right now for some reason. So very excited to see this. I'm hoping that we can get a couple wins with this one. I really do like this deck. I've been playing it just a little bit to kind of get my head wrapped around it and the, the play patterns of the deck. And it's, it's a very, very fun one. So guys, I encourage you check this one out. We will jump into games and we'll see how we do. Uh, but definitely play around with this one as well. You do get a full sideboard if you pull the exact deck list just as a heads up. But let's jump into it. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. A bit of a 
bit of a heavy-handed uh, hand here. <laughs> um, I think we'll try it. I don't love it because if this just happened to be mono red, which thankfully it isn't, uh, we would have probably just lost. But, you know, well, we like to try things here. Again, we learn something new every day, right? So that's fine. Uh, cool. I'm just going to throw out the, uh, the Spirited Companion here. Not a super aggressive play, of course, but um, it does give us a little blocker here if we ever need it. I don't know that we do right off the bat, but uh, it is very helpful. Destroy Evil could be quite good uh, against this, so that's very, very solid. Um, I think here I will actually block. I would love just to depopulate, actually. That would be quite nice. Um, Alright, so we can do this. Um... I do think we are in a position of, like, we probably just need to get rid of the Rafine. Uh, Rafine is just such a powerful enabler for these decks, and uh, obviously, you know, this is representing quite a bit more damage, but this is also easier for us to manage in terms of blocking or things like that. While we do have to take a hit here, we have a wedding announcement coming down, and more importantly right now, we just have a Wandering Emperor, which I am just going to run out here. Uh, if they have a Counterspell, they have a Counterspell, but I think this is a better option because it also exiles this. So if they do happen to have a way of solving that problem, great, but it looks like they don't. So I think that worked out for us okay. Uh, I am a little concerned about these Esper Rafine decks because naturally they are very, very powerful. So just some things to consider that we'll, uh, we'll do our best to account for. I think I'll just do this. Um, and then that actually opens up quite a bit of options for us on the... Uh, this is a bit of a tell. Uh, but they didn't have an answer for the Rafine, so... Uh, this is a bit of a tell that if they attack... Oh, it has Vigilance. Well, we still have the Destroy Evil, so that's fine. Uh, we should have then played a, uh, a Wedding Announcement. That was a bit of a mistake, but that's fine. Um... So I'm going to go ahead and destroy evil on the AO now, so they don't get a reasonable attack this turn. Curious to see, so obviously they have to go with the first one, I'm, I'm very curious to see what they go for here. I'm kind of hoping they only hit like another Rafine. <laughs> uh, that would be a little silly, but that'd be great. Okay, a Kaito, that's very, very good, uh, naturally, but again, they don't get an attack this turn, which is helpful. Um, definitely wish we had played the wedding announcement last turn. I completely forgot AO had Vigilance. That was just my fault. Alright. Uh, yeah. That's fine. Alright, land is quite good. Um, it might just be Sanctuary Warden, honestly. Uh, it's just a really good card. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think I just go for Sanctuary Warden. It's just going to be difficult for them to deal with. I will remove one. Uh, the only reason I'm okay doing this is they've only got two cards in hand at this point. Um, so I'm a little curious to see what they actually have. They had a go for the throat. That's it so far, as far as removal goes. So, like, we might be able to get them here. Um, we also have the Wandering Emperor to deal with the unblockable token, which is helpful, and this also threatens Kaito Shizuki quite well, so they are going to attack here. I'm assuming they just want to get rid of the shield token. Um, I'm more apt to just double blocking on the Denek, to be honest. I don't really... Yeah, I think I'm just going to do this. What did they discard? Destroy evil and wedding announcement. Okay. So they only get to kill one of these still. So like, there's kind of an easy double block. I'd rather not waste the shield token or, or the shield counter on the sanctuary warden. So I think this is just a safer option. That's fine. I mean, yeah, they kill a couple things, but I really don't care that much, to be honest. Um, it's not the end of the world, so. That is terrifying. Okay, well, that changes things. Um, <laughs> depopulate would be, like, amazing right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just have to draw. Ugh, okay. <clears throat> uh, definitely play land. 
I think we definitely throw this out. Uh, we exile you. I'm gonna play the wedding announcement just to just to get blockers. The question is, do we attack? I don't think we can, personally. Uh, this is such a that shield rid is so scary. Oh, okay. So we have to figure out a solution to this. I think our best answer is gonna be depopulate. The problem is obviously our draws, while not locked down, are taxing. Uh, and that's a little bit of a problem and with Rafine here, they are very much incentivized to attack so they can get extra uh, draws or, or extra life gain here, uh, which is very very solid Okay uh, Yeah, I Think I do do I care? I don't think I care that much. They gain two life, which is less than ideal. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> uh, this is a tricky game. This is a very tricky game. That's very helpful um, because we can get rid of this. Which I do think this is the target to get rid of because now we can Spirited Companion without taxing our draws. Uh, and that's actually pretty useful, right? Like, so... And I do think Spirited Companion's the answer here. We just need to get to a Depopulate, I think, is our best answer, because it does give us a little bit more breathing room. Um, and I think I will just go ahead and pop this, too. We get to draw a couple cards here. I think that's probably pretty reasonable. They're gonna cycle. I'm a little surprised they didn't cycle previously. That seems a little odd. But, okay. We only get to draw one card here. We only have the artifacts. Or, excuse me, the enchantments. Uh, but that's fine. That is perfectly fine. Um, I think I go for the Kaito kill. And I am not going to pop the counter here. They do draw a card. I'm going to decline. Um, again, I just don't want to... Like, if they want to block with the Rafine, that's fine. Uh, because this is going to open up if they have a go for the throat. <clears throat> if they have any kind of removal, that's fine. Um, but they at least had to kill a Rafine to do it. They may have just another Rafine, right? And that's perfectly fine, but uh, they are going to have to play it. They aren't going to be able to attack with it right away. Like, there's benefits to doing that. And clearly, they very highly value the Kaito. Um, given this scenario, which is kind of interesting. Okay. I think I'm just going to triple block here. <laughs> this is a lot. Uh, but again, we're playing to the out of depopulate for the most part here. So like, we could have just waited and wandering emperored, but we still get to keep one of our guys around. I think that's fine. Um, we didn't want to take five total there because them getting below 10 here seems a little sketchy. They don't necessarily have... Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, did not think about that. Maybe that was a mistake. That's fine. All right. That's very good. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. I'm going to Elspeth. Uh, we are going to plus. We're giving this little, little guy lifelink. <laughs> so we can get out of range a little bit here. Uh, excuse me. Not there. There. Uh, and then this actually will draw us a card as well. I will take a counter off of here to draw and do a little bit more. All right, land, great, draw an extra card, great. Okay, not saying we're in the clear, but we are in a much better position than we were previously. We don't have to, we don't have a Kaito to worry about at the moment. They don't have a Shieldred down and they don't have a Rafine down. So at least this is a rebuild turn for them. Uh, which is fine. Like they sh they can go for it. Um, I just if, ideally I don't want them to deal with the sanctuary warden. <laughs> oh no! So they get to re oh that's bad. Okay, yeah that's really really bad. Um, well I say that having life link on our sanctuary warden really makes a difference. Um, because if they pull back Shieldred, that feels a bit slow. Uh, if they pull back, 
their own sanctuary warden our sanctuary warden is stronger um so they get ao back okay that seems okay uh yeah cool that seems fine um <clears throat> So the question becomes, what do we want to do here, right? Do we just want to give it first strike? Hmm. Or do we just want to go this route, which is also reasonable? I think I want to go here and give it vigilance, actually. I will attack with everything just because um, I will remove one counter here okay keeping in mind we haven't actually played a card this turn that's fine I don't I don't particularly care if they kill a token so we're gaining a lot of life back at this point we get to throw this out do we want to throw two out or <clears throat> do we want to leave room for the wandering Emperor I think we leave room um, may not be the smartest play. I really don't know. Uh, this has Vigilance, so it's not like we're going to be able to, to snag it with the minus two. But uh, if they go for, you know, like a, an underdog or something along those lines, we can, excuse me, exile it uh, and, and remove that ability later on. So that seems beneficial. We'll see. And it may not work out, but I do feel like we are... Uh, at least stabilizing a little bit. This might be the only game we get to. This has been a killer game. Every once in a while, man, you get really good games like this and it just feels great. We have one last week too. Okay. Um, what do we do, if anything, about this? Nothing, unfortunately. Uh, we had to assume that was coming at some point, right? So that's not overly surprising. Okay, so they attack him with both. I'm assuming they're gonna go Elspeth with the AO at the very least, um, which is smart. Yep. Both of them at Elspeth, that's interesting. All right, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna exile the underdog. <clears throat> so that just removes that as a possibility anymore. They don't get to draw cards off of it. Like, there's a lot of benefit to that, naturally. Um, all right, let's throw a counter here. Uh, um, I'm gonna go lifelink for right now. We know, right, that uh, the Elspeth is going down. Like, I don't really think... We could have gone blocker, I guess, but I don't really... I don't think that's the move, personally. So are you out there? Um, here we get to draw two off of this, which feels really good. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, so we get two more two twos. So we're, I think our plan now is just the go wide plan, right? Like they've got an AO and that's kind of it. Um, they haven't played much else that's like all that exciting. I mean, they've had quite a handful of good cards, but it doesn't really seem to be getting them very far. AO is great. It's going to take down, I assume, the Elspeth. Um, yeah, makes sense. That's definitely the good option. Um, but this has been a phenomenal game very well played by yakumo i hope i said that correctly uh and thank you so much for the game this has been great what a fantastic one regardless of what happens right like i think we've played relatively well i think the opponents played phenomenally uh and so yeah this feels really good i'm just happy that it's it's been a good game <laughs> i'm gonna take the opportunity to draw a card here of course uh there's our sanctuary warden that's what we needed Awesome. Let's go ahead and get that down. Uh, excellent. Do we take a counter? I think we will. 
Um, I think that's fine. All right. Uh, we're going to plus up, giving this one first strike. Uh, that way we can attack with that. And that'll actually trigger both wedding announcements, which is great. All right. I think it's just attack with the one. I don't think we need to do both. It won't trigger these uh, by doing that, but that's fine. Okay. So they are going to take the... That's interesting. Okay. I'm curious to see what they do. Oh, they can give it hexproof and indestructible. Did not think about that. Whoops. Okay, that's fine. The very least we gain a bunch of life out of it so <laughs> that's cool um well done opponent at whoops 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 nope at the very least we did make him pop that off so i'm good with it all right let's get a couple more now we just have stronger threats um we're gonna get to a point unless they sweep which they might where we should be able to just kind of uh power out quite a bit here. I'm very happy they played this. This is where Cathar Commando comes in. Uh, let's do it now, I think. Um, just gonna go ahead and kill this so they don't... I don't want them going wide like we're going wide. And there we go! Whoo! <laughs> oh, man! Guys, what a game! That was amazing! Uh, and we ranked up! Guys! That was insane. Uh, okay, well, unfortunately, we are kind of running up on time here, guys. So I am going to have to cut this one short. But what an amazing game. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys. So we got the win against Esper Rafine, which is, a, I think, a notoriously tricky deck to deal with most of the time. I felt like we kind of always had the answers that we needed, and it just kind of worked out. We definitely were in the, the doghouse there for a little bit, right? Like, I think we, we definitely were on a scare at times. I don't think we were solidly in the lead the whole time. However, we were able to kind of buy our way back in and actually deal with that, and that was amazing. I really love that. So, guys, first and foremost, again, because we almost uh, we only got one game out of this, I just want to throw this out here as an option. If you guys want to see an MTG and chill video on this, one without commentary where we just play a handful of games for about an hour, if that's something that you want to see, we can put some music in the background. You guys can watch that and get a better feel for the deck, because I do think this has a lot of potential interest, in my opinion. Um, then maybe that's something we can do. Just let me know in the comment section below. That would be super, super helpful. I can go ahead and record some of that, and that way you guys have some. Uh, but I highly recommend trying this deck out. In practice, I only played a handful of games. It did very well as well. Uh, and so I do think there's a lot to this deck that is very, very fun. So I encourage you, try this one out. The link will be down below. And guys, thank you so much for watching. It's really, really good to be back. I hate that I missed yesterday, but I'm here. You're stuck with me again. I love you all very much. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again soon.